Today we're going to talk about lab safety in the science classroom and we're going to do it using the Simpsons as our examples. So let's get started. I know that you have had to deal with lab safety over and over and over again every single science class you've had, but it's something that we need to really think about because safety is everybody's responsibility. Um, I don't want you to be Homer in this circumstance right here. We want to just say no to that and we don't want to pay attention like these two. Um, I need you to be following along, following safety protocol at all times. This slide is a nightmare. So looking at this lab station, yours should definitely never, ever, ever look that bad. There's so many things wrong here. We've got lab equipment, um, lab paper on the floor, spilled uh, supplies, spilled supplies, lab equipment on the floor. We've got a flask that's been stoppered. Um, I don't even think his goggles are on properly. She's not wearing any goggles. Uh, pipette is inside of the test tubes. Papers are all over the place. Um, there's just so many things wrong. You've got um, problem after problem here and this is breaking probably every laboratory safety procedure out there. Um, so we want to make sure that this is not what our lab station looks like ever. So I need you to be smart when you're in science lab, um, whether it's for biology or ecology, whatever the class is, uh, while you're doing science experiments, you're going to be expected to follow the safety rules. They are common sense. Nothing is um, out of the ordinary. It's literally just don't be an idiot. Um, knowing what to do in the different laboratory situations will definitely help prevent injuries and accidents. Uh, so. I'm going to tell you some of the expectations for this class. Something I never want to hear you say is, my bad. I didn't mean to. It, it's not my fault. It wasn't my fault. I didn't know that that was happening. Well, he did it first. She started it. No, we are not playing when we have chemicals out. We are not playing when we have um, a lab going on. I need 100% of you to be on your best game 100% of the time during lab because if someone is hurt or equipment is broken we can't undo anything that happens to those people and that is not a good thing. So as I said before pretty much every rule and regulation for lab safety that I'm going to mention to you deals with common sense. Eyeglasses and sunglasses are not adequate substitutes for eye protection. Okay, you have to wear goggles. If the lab says goggles, then you wear the goggles. We will be nerds together and we will be united with our goggles. Okay, so looking at this really quick uh, comic, we have goodbye summer, goodbye skimpy tops, goodbye long sunny days, goodbye pants that look like they're falling off, goodbye bare chest, bare bellies, bare thighs, and nearly bare rear ends, goodbye tattoos, navel rings, and sequin tummy fat, goodbye body parts I don't want to think about, and underwear I don't want to see, summer's over, put your clothes back on everyone and let proper civilization resume. Goodbye quiet summer evenings. I've never, I've held that in for three months. I was about to explode. Okay, so what the heck does that mean? What that means is, Simply put, you need to follow the dress code. And I don't mean our high school dress code, I mean the laboratory dress code. You're gonna have a lot of opportunities to do some really cool labs, but to do those labs, you can't be horse playing in the middle of it. So please take it seriously. All right, so some general precautions that we're going to talk about is you have to read all the directions before beginning an experiment. Uh, never perform activities that are not assigned by me. Obviously, with this was said already, don't engage in horseplay. There's not going to be any eating or drinking while we're doing labs unless the lab is an edible one, and we will do lots of edible labs this year. And you are expected to keep your lab station clean and tidy at all times. It was clean when you came in. It needs to be clean when you leave. As far as dress code safety is concerned, um, I said if a minute ago uh, something along the lines of 
dress code will be discussed. We're not talking about the dress code that deals with the school. We're talking about the dress code that deals with lab. You'll be expected to wear goggles. If you have long hair, you need to tie it back. Uh, and that's to protect it from chemicals and flames and equipment. Uh, you are to not wear open-toed shoes or sandals on a day that we might be dealing with sharp objects or chemicals that could uh, harm you. And if you're wearing long sleeves, then you'll be expected to roll them up. And if you have on loose jewelry, uh, cuffs and bracelets and that kind of stuff, or your clothing is loose, then you'll be expected to secure that as well. This is all for your protection. We don't want to ruin anything on your body or your clothing. Okay, first aid safety is quite easy. Report all accidents to me and know the location of the emergency equipment. We have a few pieces of emergency equipment in the classroom and it's very important that you know where they are. Safety equipment for this room is located in the following places. The eyewash station is attached to the demonstration table at the front of the room. The fire extinguisher is actually outside the classroom door. Uh, the fire blanket and the shower are both in the front of the room towards the left side and the whole um, side area, there's a bunch of safety equipment over there, including a first aid kit. Okay, so heating and fire safety, we definitely need to talk about uh, flames and hazards that uh, deal with flames. I hate fire. I, and I don't know why I dislike it so much, but I do. So we're going to be extra careful in here um, because I have been in a school that has caught on fire before, and I've been in a school that has had some terrible labs uh, mishaps before, and I do not want to have that happen to us. So um, first things first is you're never going to heat anything unless I tell you to. You're going to use the back of your hand to feel for heat. You're not going to just touch it. And um, obviously, no closed containers um, to heat a liquid in. Now, we will be using things like forceps and um, different pieces of lab equipment that will help us if we are ever heating something uh, so that we will not burn our hands, um, you know, oven mitts and that kind of stuff. Think about basic kitchen chemistry. What would you do if you had to take a cake out of the oven um, you would not just grab it you would use an oven mitt and the same applies in science class as well if we're going to heat things in the lab we're going to be using glassware um, and we have to be careful with the, th the pieces that we are using that they are not broken or chipped um, if you have any broken or chipped glassware in your possession, let me know. When I was in the middle school, we were getting rid of the glassware and moving to plastic. So um, again, if you have broken pieces, please do not use it unless it has been cleared by me. Uh, you're never, ever, ever allowed to eat or drink from this glassware. Again, we will have edible labs, but that does not mean you will use those pieces of equipment those are for chemicals only. Please clean your glassware. If you use something, then there are gonna be supplies at the sink for you to clean up what you have, uh, you have used. And obviously never pick up glassware without first checking to see if it's hot because it might look like it's okay and then we are dealing with you having second degree burns, no fun. So we've gone through our experiment. It was so much fun. You guys had a blast. Um, you have to return all of the equipment to its proper place. If you are, if you had a station that you had to go to, make sure you put the stuff back at that station. If you're doing it at your table, then make sure that your station of the table is clean. Make it cleaner than it did when you entered the lab. That would be amazing. Um, dispose of all waste materials as I instruct you to do so, and then wash your hands. You do not want to use uh, to walk out of here with any residue from whatever we might be dealing with on your hands. So please wash your hands and you will be good to go.